Hammerhead, the makers of the new Karoo 2 GPS head unit, got in touch with us and asked if we would make a video showcasing their new device. Rather than sit in the studio and do a first look at it, we decided to have some more fun. We hope you like it. Where the hell are we and why have we been left in the middle of nowhere? I have no idea. Nah, me neither. Oh, it's got a, it's got a message on my phone. It says, well, oh, it's from Dan. It says, welcome to the GCN navigation challenge. Uh, to demonstrate how capable cutting edge GPS devices are, you've been dropped in a random location with a map and a compass you, well, you've I've got, got my compass. And a state-of-the-art Hammerhead Karoo 2 GPS device. First rider back to GCN Mega Base in Bath is the winner. Where on earth is the map? Well, um, Dan says you've got to look under the crack on the side of the road. He also says, can recently retired ex-pro Alex with a map Beat Ollie with a state-of-the-art GPS. Oh, I got it. I got, I got it. It's basically tortoise and the hare. Ah, stinger nails. There's a snail on the map. <laughs> <laughs> that's how long it's been here. When the hell did you put that here? All right, that's for you. Oh. Snail on that as well. <laughs> Snails on everything. Hang on a minute, this is easy. All I'm going to need to do is follow you all the way back to GCN Mega Base and, well, easily out sprint you at the end. Oh, hang on, I've got another message. Dan says, that's why there's more instructions, Alex. Yeah. We aren't allowed to ride together. The map user, aka you, has to ride back via Cheddar Gorge scenic viewpoint uh, on, on your route okay. and take a photo to prove you were there and then I have to ride back via the historic city of Wells, the smallest city in England, and also get a photo to prove I was there. Okay. Oh, and you're not allowed to use your phone. Right, this could be fun, couldn't it? Right. See how we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Start already. Oh. <laughs> it's poll time. Who will win navigating an unknown route? Recently retired ex-pro Alex Payton and map the hair, or Ollie the Tortoise Bridgewood and his Hammerhead Crew 2 GPS. Right, I'm off. See ya. He doesn't even know where he's going. I've set off real confidence that Ollie is a little bit concerned and thinks that he's under pressure. It's all about the mind games, but in reality, I don't have the slightest clue where I am, so I'm going to have to stop and take a map bearing in a minute. I, on the other hand, am simply going to turn on my state-of-the-art Hammerhead Karoo 2 um, and then navigate through the very, well, very clear display and excellent touchscreen, it's basically smartphone level, input my destination, which is Bath via Wells, and uh, get it to compute my route. That is, of course, the manual way of doing it, just manually inputting an address or point of interest. But you can also easily sync all your routes from third-party apps like Komoot or Strava, and it's pretty cool. I can see all my sort of Komoot routes in there, and I can just draw on them if I want to. But, uh, well, I'd better, better set off, um, better get going. So, uh, right, let's crack on. Right, let's get this map out. Jesus Christ. So, go very well. I need to use my compass to work out the direction that I need to travel. Um, where there? Right. North is that way which means south is that way, and I need to be traveling across towards Cheddar Gorge, which is the main point of my route. That way it is. Up here, and I'll take the next left. 
He's getting dropped now. Oh. <laughs> right. Ollie's set off all smug with himself with his new fandangled gadget. Well, I've got a map. But maps don't have batteries. They don't go flat and they're always going to work. God, I love maps. Alex has a fair point. However, the battery life on my computer is 12 to 15 hours, meaning I'm not going to run out today. But if you did want to extend your battery life further, you could combine it with an external battery pack or perhaps even a dynamo hub to increase your range. And even if you did run out of battery for whatever reason, thanks to a waterproof USB-C port, you can fast charge it 30% in just 30 minutes. I've just stopped at some traffic lights. I'm about 10, 15 minutes into my ride. Already I've taken one wrong turning. And so far, mostly been going into a headwind. Whereas I can't help but notice, Ollie went the other way, which was definite tailwind. So I think he might have stitched me up to start with here. So let's see how progress goes. On to Cheddar Gorge for our first waypoint. Something else I need to point out is that it wasn't that long ago that if you used a bike computer to navigate on the fly, and you, you did what I just did, and, typed in the destination you wanted to go, they would seemingly go out of their way to try and kill you, sending you down motorways at every available opportunity. Thankfully, the tech and algorithms in here are far more sophisticated and are actually creating pretty sensible routes that are rather good and, I mean, sending me down some rather nice roads. I'm rather enjoying this. Ooh. I'm getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation prompts as I approach various junctions and such the like. You also have the option of audio prompts too, which can give you a little you know, noise to tell you that a junction's approaching and you need to kind of just have a quick look to see where you need to go. I've already got fed up with my compass around my neck, so now I've devised a way to secure it to my bike mount. I think you'll agree, that's pretty impressive. Maps take up loads of space, and this one I've got, I've had to stuff up my jersey that it takes up so much space, it doesn't even fit in my pocket. And to top it off, Ollie's got me a map that doesn't even cover the area that I need to ride in, so I'm about to run out of map detail. So if you want a detailed map that covers quite a vast amount of area, it'll be absolutely massive. Weight of a map? I don't have a clue, but it's considerably more than the weight of a GPS file, that's for sure. My GPS weighs 130 grams, and what's even more impressive is that it has the entire of Europe mapped on it. Uh, this bad boy has 32 gigabytes of storage, which means we well, can store loads and loads of stuff on it. But you can actually put all of the maps on the world on it if, if you want to. All the maps are kind of stored in the cloud. And when you travel to a different region, you can then download the area of map that you want. So for example, if you went to America, you could download the whole of America onto the device. I don't need that right now, so I've not got it. I've just got Europe. But can you imagine how many maps you'd have to carry if you want to like to carry the whole of Europe with you? Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I win again, Alex. I've made it to Cheddar Gorge, and it took a little bit of guesswork. My map, the compass, and paying attention to the road signs. But what I need to do now is stop, take a minute to get the map out, plan ahead as best as I can, up until where this map starts to run out of useful information, and plan the next little section out. map 
have laid out and it slowly dawned on me that I've run out of useful area and Bath is not even on the map. I can see where Westbury is, but that's not really helping me out much. Um, so last time I rode up Cheddar Gorge was in 2018 in the Tour of Britain. And I'm gonna have to scrape my memory a little bit more here because I need to plan the way back to Bath when I get to the top. And I can kind of remember it. So a bit of memory and a bit of road size and hopefully I can get there and catch Ollie back up. <laughs> she just crashed. <laughs> I tell you what, I spent more time folding this bloody thing up than I have using it. Whatever, it's doing a good job of keeping me warm though, with the warmth of knowledge. And my homemade compass, yeah, that doesn't work either. Look at that! That is Wells Cathedral, built in 1176. Fantastic. Also the inspiration for the uh, Pillars of the Earth, Ken Follett's epic novel, and uh, where Hot Fuzz was filmed as well. Um, fantastic winged buttresses on the side. Architectural feature for you there. Anyway, I better crack on, because otherwise Alex is going to beat me. Oh, all the sights and history. So it feels like it's starting to rain now, <laughs> and my GPS is fully waterproof, unlike Alex's map. I thought I was being very clever by stuffing the map up under my jacket to keep it dry, but when I stopped back there to check my map and directions, it turns out it's actually been very counterproductive because I've now got a map that's not only wet, it's wet with my gross sweat. Oh. I think that's Alex up ahead. I ain't gonna catch him. <laughs> yeah, step on it. What on earth is he doing going down there? That is a stupid way to go. I've picked up the road signs for Bath and that's what I've been following all the way to try and guide me back in. And I'll tell you what, the big downside of that is I'm on these busy main roads and they're not the sort of roads I normally choose to ride on. And it is getting quite busy, but luckily I've got a rear light. But definitely not a great choice. We better get going. It's a nice lake. This is a nice route. One thing that is slightly frustrating about my new cycle compass is every time we go up here, I keep glancing down to check my stats, see my average power, see the output I'm doing, see how far we've got less to ride. But currently all it's doing is spinning around in circles, so that's not much help either. Fortunately, my Karoo 2 is so much more than just a GPS navigation device. It can display a whole host of metrics, things that you won't even believe, and it can connect to all my sensors, so for my power, my heart rate, my cadence, and then display those on customized data screens. And if you're a super nerd like me, then you'll love that it has an open Android platform as well, which kind of future-proofs the device and allows you to sideload apps onto it like a phone. Just cruising into Bath now. I know I'm ahead of Alex with that stupid turn he took earlier. Uh, just basically chill out and enjoy it now. It's been a nice route. Savour the victory. Just, uh, just relax. Woo! Feel like Philippe Gilbert when he won uh, Flanders and he was like five minutes ahead of everyone. Yeah, that's basically me right now. Just gonna chill, soft pedal. Use it as a cool down. Boom. Heading up to the Royal Crescent where Bridgerton was filmed. I don't know any Bridgerton fans watching. Oh, can't believe that. Drugs again! <laughs> God sake! Oh. 
God, I tried really hard then. I'm gonna tell Ollie it was easy. Oh, hey, mate. You all right? I was just um, double checking my coordinates. Actually, I think I might just ride all the way home. <laughs> there you go, one. I'll tell you what, that was a good race, that was. But I've got a point now. You've got all the kit, and I did still beat you. <sighs> yes, you did. But I had a great time. It was a good race, and I just had a majestic ride home through some, you know, beautiful and quiet lanes just... Loving it, it was great fun. How was your ride? Um, it was okay, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah I'll take that, yeah. I'll tell you what though, the, uh, the best thing about a, about a GPS is that when, when you've, you've finished your ride, you know, on the, uh, on the set of Bridgerton, um, you can save it in, in the Karoo and then uh, it will ask you where you would like it uploaded and what you'd like to call it. So I'm gonna call this ride, Ollie B. Alex home. But you didn't win. Um, yeah, I did. There's absolutely no way did you win. Well, that's, that's funny that you say that, because uh, looking on Kamut, I, I can't see your ride anywhere. And I guess, what, I mean, if it's, if it's not there, then did it, did it ever really happen? Too bloody right happened. If you say so. 